Let's see. Don't do a continuous. Um, hey, 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 hey. I know you're a professional. Oi, I'm a sick commentator, yeah. And don't do a. What I mean is, don't do a continuous stream towards <laughs> us. Because <laughs> you'll be interrupting us every 30 I, seconds. I've got a sick commentator, yeah. Sorry, right, we, sorry. Are, we are live, by the way. So we... Are we? Yeah, we are. That's, that's, it's okay. This is how we, you have to kind of have a, a two-minute blur while it? people log on. Where so. is it? Where is it? Where is it? Hey, guys. Just give us two minutes. We're just setting everything up. Where is it? What are you doing? Um, I'm trying to see the feed. Just go to your notifications. It should come in your notifications. At least you got a notification in the sun. Yeah, that's a chat. Nice. Just sort of some technical issues, guys. This is a bit of a first for me because I don't do kind of uh, pre-recording and Barry and these guys don't do live rec- live <laughs> streaming. So we, we've got a bit of a mishmash going on at the moment. So we're just trying to set up both. We've got cameras here, cameras here. We've got mics up here. We've got PCs over here, Macs over here. It, it's just going on all over the shop at the moment. Ah, hang on. There we go. Click on that. Nice. There we go. And there is always a bit of a lag, obviously. Yeah, that's, that's what I'll do. I'll kick off <laughs> our mic as well. And we'll kick off my camera as well. And you should see as people start to appeal. There's people liking it, so I know people are logging on there. Right, right. So that's recording. The that's only thing you won't get is when, when it's on mine, it will tell me if, as people kind of jump on and I'll give, say hi to people. But we've got Ian Yo saying yo, yo, yo. So there you go. He's oh, always first on, to be honest. So I know he gets a notification. Committed, committed follower. There is, there is. You'll probably see Blake on here. You'll probably see Chris Wilkins jump on. There's a few people all swinging here and there. So here we go. Oh, it all works, mate. To be honest, I look better in the dark anyway, yeah. so it doesn't matter too much. So right, uh, for the sake of my stream, by the way, I know this not none of this is going to be on um, the retro shed recording, but. Um, hi guys, how you doing? I know it's been a while since we've done like a serious stream on Yamya Retro Gaming, but it's been a mad summer, it's been a mad autumn, there's been a lot going on, uh, you know, Sorry, but... I couldn't find Brooke streaming your music. <laughs> <laughs> I'll turn the watch off. Shut up, oh, Apple Watch. Shut up, Siri. <laughs> see, and that's, that's, that's the things you get on live streams. You so don't get to see, usually. Um, but uh, obviously, um, as you can see, I'm here today with my good mate Barry Morse from Retro Shed Hello. and his son Josh. Josh, stick your head on. You're going to be there. Hello. There's a delay, but you will be there. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> um, but yeah, so we're all here today anyway. And um, I was going to do a video covering uh, the Philips Video Pack G7000. Uh, sorry, this is really surreal because we've got like a time delay going on on, on our feed on the back here. <laughs> Hello there. Um, but yeah, we've been wanting to cover this system for a while. Um, Barry's a big fan of this system, whereas I have literally no experience with it. And for once, I mean, I'm pretty clued up on mouse generations. I'm pretty clued up on mouse consoles, mouse computers from over the years. I don't even need to research for mouse. So my, my knowledge, I'm like <laughs> Rayman, I do store a lot of crap up here. My, my wife said I'm full of more useless knowledge than any person alive, so... <laughs> Um, I think she's right in that respect. When it comes to the video pack, I know somewhere between little to nothing on it. So I thought it'd be better with me finally going ahead and making the purchase of the latest uh, multi cart that's come out for the system. Yeah, I definitely want one of these. This looks you, nice. You've got to, in yeah. yeah. Um, I thought it'd be wise for us to kind of come over, have a chat with Barry. I've been meaning to come over for a while, have a chat with him anyway. Come and check out the wonderful shed, which you can see a bit of in the background. I know this recording is going to be nowhere near as good quality as what those guys do, but um, at least you're going to get to see a little bit of the shed and you're going to get to see a little bit behind the scenes of the way they shoot their videos because once I've stopped my waffle here, the guys will, will be recording some of the bits like for their video to edit out properly. Uh, but you're going to see all the all the ugly, you know, behind the scenes bits, warts and actually, all. Actually, you're going to get to see a corner of the shed that you never actually normally see. I don't think anyone's ever seen this corner of the shed. No, that's true. Well, they do, no, 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 they have. We did that unboxing here once. Oh before. yeah, probably yeah. Yes, you we're did. always looking that way. So. I suppose because you never use a record directly no? to a system no. like Gorilla Style, yeah, that's what it is. Whereas obviously that's what we've got to do here, and that's well, good job is you can actually see the screen just fine. You can see the system just fine. You can hear us all just fine. I hope. Uh, if you can't hear us at all, guys, please say so. 
Just want to say a quick hello there to Gary. Hi, Paul. How's it going, mate? Bane up in Scotland there. Hello there. And uh, anybody else who's joining the stream, I'm sure that it'll, it'll quickly tot up. You can see the likes appearing there. as <laughs> people get acknowledged in there. Nice. Oh, and I will give a shout out to um, to Kev because he wants us to give a shout out to him and his daughter's birthday. Which one was it? He, he did say, didn't he? He did, and I asked him to remind me because I said there's no way I'll. Yeah, remember. sorry about that. So yeah, hi Kev. Anyway, I know you'll check the stream yeah, out. Happy yeah, birthday. happy birthday. Um, so. Anyway, um, yeah, these are my good friends from the Retro Shed. A lot of you guys have seen these guys before. If you haven't, please get yourselves on YouTube. Please go to their channel, do subscribe, and do get the notification. You have to click the notification bell, don't you? To yeah, get, something make sure like you, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know that the, the rules are always changing with YouTube, so I'm not yeah. familiar with it myself. But please go on and check out their stuff, because their stuff is... We're not just talking, we're not this, this crap that I'm doing now, we're talking, <laughs> that they edit it properly, it's all well lit, well, it's we all try. recorded. Well, we try, we try. It's all well, re <laughs> it's all well rehearsed and all well researched, so go and check their stuff, they've got some brilliant content, and obviously I've done a lot with these guys with Revival and various things, um, you know, over the years, and just recently we took a trip up to Leeds, didn't we, for... Um, we did, when and how it. much fun was that, Josh? Not, yeah, it was good. Oh, okay, I was cool. just reading Evening Retro. Yeah, books. Evening Gary. <laughs> How's it going, Gary? You all right, Hi, mate? Gary. Oh, Gareth Kennelly's on as well. How's it going, Gareth? You all, all right. right, mate? Paul Harris, all how's right, it going? Um, I apologise for any delay, I've said this before, there's always a slight delay in what we get here from you guys typing, but we are acknowledging the responses as they come in. When these guys are recording, we may do little pauses to kind of address any questions, but um, yeah, I will be checking in with you guys and any questions you've got. So anyway, um, what we're going to be covering today, before you guys kind of roll into your spiel, <laughs> um, we're covering yeah the, Phil the Philips Video Pack G7000, oh, yes. yeah, otherwise known as... The Odyssey 2 in the States and Brazil, I believe. Yes, it certainly was. Um, and uh, if you didn't need that uh, reinforcing, um, the cover of this box kind of says it all anyway. Oh, so that's nice, that is. Yeah, um, this is something that I've recently ordered. For anybody who's never seen this system before, um, it's basically, it's it's a weird kind of computer console is. hybrid, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. I'm trying to think what to like it to. I mean, in terms of actual appearance, it's like a speak and spell. You've got, you've got, you've got this kind of... Um, touchpad kind of like flat membrane keyboard. Yeah, that's pretty much spot on. Yeah, that's I'm trying is, to think. Yeah. I think the big track's got a touchpad a bit like this, it hasn't does. it? Yeah, it does. Yeah. The big track up there, by the way. But oh, there we go. We've got, we've got the big track over there. We've got a bit of similar. It's touchpad. basically a membrane. It's a very cheap membrane keyboard. Isn't yeah. It? I mean, if you've ever messed with, oh, as it happens, I'll just um, borrow it in for reference. It's right face. there. Yeah. If you've ever messed with the ZX81 and the lovely feeling keyboard on yeah. that. Um, this is a little Actually, bit. That's more responsive. Yeah, be, be, I suppose because it's bigger, maybe mm, maybe yeah. the actual response areas yeah. on it are a little bit better. Um, but yeah, um, it's it, it's much like that. But um, unlike this, obviously, in which you needed to have an external device to to load your games and that. Obviously, this being rooted in America, mm. they were very much bef long before we were messing with consoles. They were firmly in the areas of like ROM chips and cartridge-based systems, you know. So. Um, as far as era goes, we're talking second generation, you know, this thing yeah. would have been competing with? Um, Atari 2600 primarily. Yeah. Um, what else? Magnavox. No, not Magnavox. It is a Magnavox. It is a Magnavox. Isn't it? In television? I suppose the, the original Odyssey would have still yeah, been the doing the rounds yeah. at the time anyway. Wouldn't so uh, you're talking in television? Uh, Vectrex, Fairchild, Channel F, yeah. which is really well, old. Isn't it, it? We can't compare it to the Vectrex. No. The Vectrex is too good. <laughs> yeah. Totally out. Vectrex it obviously got its, its new it? cult following. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, as far as as competing goes, I mean, that is you know where it was at. I think it was it was originally designed to compete with the Atari Twenty Six Hundred. Yeah, it was. <laughs> I mean, as, as, I suppose as far as sales goes, it didn't even compare, unfortunately. Um, no, no, I've got the stats here, and because I'm old, everything's down on paper for me. Um, so this sold 2 million units worldwide. Two million. 2 million units versus how many, Josh, for the Atari? 17 million. No, 30 million. Oh. 30 million, yeah. 2,600. I think 17 million was my around oh, guess, remember. wasn't it? I yeah, just remember yeah. that number. <laughs> but, you know, the Atari 2600 was killing it. I think that was probably yeah. most people that I know's real first yeah. exposure to a cartridge-based system. Um, you know, in the early 80s, we were, we were very much messing about still with 8-bit computers. Astro and, Wars. Yeah, and I suppose in the second generation, things like the generic term being Pong consoles were, were mostly doing the rounds around that time. Because this was 1980... 78. 
This there is 1978. That's you what I mean. Can believe that. We had a lifespan until. I think it sold until 1982 when its predecessor came out. And I'd imagine mm. by that time it was pretty much obsolete. Yeah. So around the 1980 mark, you would have been yeah. competing with, you know, Grand over here. Grandstand had a massive line of yeah. Pong consoles. One of them I'll actually be talking about in an upcoming video. Uh, and it's the Grandstand, uh, I'm trying to think of the actual model number for it now, but it's the Kevin Keegan model. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to explain that a lot more in the, but I'm going to get, talk a lot about that one. I think I saw that in the Argos catalogue yes, earlier. Yes, you, you did. That, that was the very, very first gaming system and gaming console we had in our house. If you don't count the Grandstand tabletop games, which obviously we had some of as well, yeah. we had uh, Astro Wars, we had Firefox. Uh, we had Scramble. Scramble. Yeah. I just noticed you've got the, the handheld yeah, LCD yeah. Scramble there. Mm. That is something that we also... I had that exact one as well, yeah. but uh, we damaged the screen on that. So that's kind of wh where we were going, you know, in, in terms of systems around that time. Um, when, when you got your system anyway, um, it, it did have a basic program for it, didn't it? You could, I think you, you could, could buy a basic Hello. programming cartridge, but it was... You're reading comments? Yeah, he is, yeah he's checking in. <laughs> Evening Space Cadets. Oh, Evening, how's Rob? it going? I've got Rob up there, you've got Paul Monaghan. How's it going, Paul? You all right? Evening all. Hopefully the membrane lasts longer than the ZX81. Yes, wow, yeah. yeah I, think it, I think it would, to be fair. I mean, this is 1978. Yeah. I mean, it's older than the ZX81, but... If you look at the, you can't really appreciate the condition on here, but this yours is mint. I've brought mine along today as well because we didn't know which one was going to be working the best, yeah. and mine is nowhere near it's as clean still, as this one. It's still even got the big made in France sticker on that everybody took off. <laughs> everybody took that off. <laughs> <laughs> so too. it's got a bit of originality there, anyway. Um, and when when your games come anyway, you've got these rather cool. This is something that I, I really wanted to mention, and it's something I wish they would kind of do now. And I think it's the direction mm. they're heading with the Spectrum yeah. Next. And that is cataloging the games. So you've got this kind of funky, kind of reversed tape kind of opening case. And then your cartridge was there laid inside with the uh, the cover actually being made up of the inlay instruction booklet. A bit I'd, like that. I'd probably break that, to be honest. I think I did break a few of them, actually. When you, yeah, they the, look so breaky. There's, yeah. there's probably, but you know what? They were actually made a bit better now. They aren't made of the, the yeah. cheap tap plastic, I suppose, oh, that's God. been put around now. And needless, the, the cartridge had to have a handle on the top because they're so difficult. <laughs> they're so <laughs> difficult. Unlike the Atari 2600, which is dead easy to... Yes. Like, these, you literally need a crowbar. Have a voice like grip. And they have this handle on the top just to help you. And now I'm getting arthritic and old. It actually helps me. It, do, it does <laughs> help. The, and I've seen quite a few of these cartridges where that's been broken. So now people are pulling hard on it. But yeah, so I, I quite like the way it was. And it only had a, a limited library altogether, didn't it? It was how many It games? did. I think the, one of the guys uh, coded 24 of them. But I think there's a, there's a fair few more than that. So we were talking about in the kitchen earlier. And I, I said mm. I'd seen the, the numbering system on the top. To so about 40 yeah. something. Yeah, yeah. But they, those were done by other companies after yeah. the 24th one. And I'm not sure if there's a homebrew market out there for this thing. I don't know. They're, they're, well, according to the multi-cart, which I'll come on to in a minute, they're probably very, very much is. But yeah, you can see we've got number 20 here which is um sorry the actual title of the game is written very small this is um stone sling so basically a catapult type game uh this one 21 secrets of the pharaohs which is uh, i've never played this game at no. all but that's number 21 so it's nice to be able to catalogue and keep your games and everything in order and quite a lot of these cases have survived well so it's good that we've got a few available and the later generation of games were presented with this red strip at the top so you could tell the games from about 1980 1981 onwards the artwork changed so they took the numbers off the front and put this red strip across the top and to be honest this this is more familiar with you know what you may have seen around the time that like take games were coming out you got the the kind of bold you know title you know the, the more impressive artwork mm -hmm. on the front um I, well this obviously hasn't got screenshots on this one has the screenshots on the front of the yeah, case yeah. this one does yeah. away with the screenshots completely because i think the kids just went mad because it had terror hawks i mean who needs screen it's screen it's screenshots yeah, when exactly terror hawks yeah. like, ah, so this, this is more <laughs> akin to what you would have seen with your spectrum or your commodore games you yeah. know as they were coming out then and uh you know it, it's nice to see that there was you know, at least a decent library for it and you could easily catalog them i really wish they would do that do this now this is what i was saying about spectrum next i yeah. think the way they're going to release those games they're all going to be kind of serial numbered up so you can kind yeah. of get a definitive collection going if you know what i mean um as what you were saying about homebrew and things like that though this kind of brings us neatly on to uh this now this is the uh the newest flash cart for this and the reason i say the newest even though this isn't a system I've really touched on myself before in the past, I know 
that a lot of people have we've seen it at some events but it, it kind of gets overlooked now with modern events and that everybody's I've seen a lot of the things before they want to experience a lot more but unless you've got an extensive software collection it becomes more difficult and now, space and space yeah when you've got boxes that big you know <laughs> I mean, you can keep a tape collection, you know, that can, yeah. that can soon get out of control. Not too bad with like DVD games like PlayStation mm. and things like that. But when you've got proper jewel Some cases, yeah, they're too bulky. And when it comes to events, people now are starting to get used to seeing, and it's something that obviously I'm a big advocate of myself. I like to play an original hardware, but I do like a good flash solution. Now, this system, uh, being an early system and also being overlooked, you wouldn't think it would actually have a flash cart solution. But there has actually been a flash cart solution that's existed on this for several years now. I think the first um, flash cart made for this goes back about eight years now, uh, which in okay. terms of the retro scene is kind of when it was starting to build up and really mm, kind of gather that. momentum. I thought this was the first flash cart. No, 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 this wasn't the first flash cart. There was a flash cart before this, which I believed was 150 in one or around that okay. marker. Uh, and it was made by the same people. I think it was a different actual developer, but the same people have released this. Uh, and the earlier car works exactly the same as this, but obviously this one now is a 233 games in one, which kind of goes against what we were saying about the library being about 40 games. And that is because if we go into the box here, it's a rather a, a nice, neat little box. Not actually intended for these cartridges, but it does kind of... And it's got the Odyssey on 2 there. logo on, so that kind of yeah. like gives a hint to its origins in the States. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I know things were licensed out and often changed slightly in naming, but <coughs> yeah. for it to go completely from Magnavox to Philips is yeah. a very bit of a strange thing. When you consider at the time, America was very much resisting the Japanese influence when yeah. it came to the yeah. electronics market. I think it's a bit strange to see that it goes from being... You know, goes from being Magnavox, which was an American born and bred company, wasn't it? Magnavox, I believe it was, yeah. To yeah. Philips, which obviously, you know. Famous for light bulbs. Yes, yeah, famous for light bulbs. <laughs> you know, it, it, you're talking overseas companies, you know, and that's not something Americans really warmed to. So, how this kind of ended up in this situation, I don't have the facts on it. No. Have you got anything on that? Not a lot, no. I don't know what the um, the relationship between Philips and Magnavox was. They're probably subsidiaries or... It could just be maybe that the something. market was easing at that point because, yeah. you know, by the time 1980 was fast approaching, I suppose they couldn't they couldn't resist it too no. much anymore. I know Philips wasn't keen on entering the, the, the gaming market, the, home, the whole home console market, because it was such a departure from what they would normally do. Well, I suppose they used to make tellies, didn't they? They used to make tellies, radios, light bulbs, stuff like that. But uh, yeah, they, it didn't get a lot of support from Philips. Like I said, there's only one or two coders in house well, at Philips. Well, I guess they, games, right? they probably didn't have as much affinity to it anyway because they didn't actually develop it. You know, no. they, they just kind of took it on and I suppose they just licensed it, it on. Yeah, they? I mean, the only thing difference between this and a Magnavox Odyssey 2. Would, it, would literally be the branding, you know. As you said, the, yeah. the Made in France sticker there is the biggest key. And the power button, the Odyssey 2 had a lovely power button here, so you could turn it off and swap the cartridge. Didn't you also With say it had detachable controllers yeah, as well? Yeah, um, there's versions of the G7000 that had detachable controllers, uh, which is a godsend because these are hardwired in, yeah. and it's a nightmare. I mean, these are detachable, but you have to pull it apart. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. So there is a socket in there, but you've got to pull it apart. Speaking so. of the controllers, I mean, the controllers themselves, I mean, they're not the kind of thing they're that you can just nasty, kind of stick on top or tuck yeah. to one side like with the Famicom. They're, they are big, ugly, dirty. They're big, ugly. They hurt. As a kid, these things, if I was playing for hours, the sharp edges used to dig in. Yeah. Um, it's very light, very springy. Inside there is a membrane. There's just a membrane, a steel yeah, shaft, no micro switches, and a spring, which you can probably hear. They're self-centering, and I think I broke both action buttons on mine. And they're course, nasty. And of course, be, being hardwired, there's not a lot you yeah. can do if you do break them. So that's one the whole of the console had to go back. We had to send it back really? to Philips dealership, and they swap under warranty, and they swapped the controllers out. I think it was gone for something like a month. Which is a long time when you're oh, eight or nine years old. Especially when everything's done by mail order and yeah, you've got yeah. no clue of the progress yeah. or whether it's going to be honoured or anything. And they also suffer from the sin that I noticed Atari 2600 did in that you've got the, the left-handed... I'm going to describe it now. Um, in arcade terms, this would be a left-handed joystick arrangement. You've got... You'd basically be expected to use the joystick with your right hand. Whichever way you grip it, whether you hold it like a joystick, whether you use it like yeah. a thumbstick, and then the button is with your left hand. Now that's not uncommon in the days of the microcomputer, you know, your, your Spectrum joysticks, Commodore joysticks, they would have all kind of started out this way, but over time yeah, yeah. 
you would then end up with dual fire buttons with yeah. you or a fire button on the stick or itself. Shot, yeah, or something yeah. Like that, yeah. Whereas obviously in arcade land, the typical right-handed configuration would be you holding the joystick with your left hand and pressing fire with the with the, yeah. the right hand. I suppose the type of games um, didn't really justify you needing to kind of hold it that way. And yeah. obviously the way you're holding the entire casing, I can understand you know why they thought that was the most logical way. But it seems so far removed from what we know now, you know. I think they probably looked at the Atari joystick, didn't they, and thought, yep, yeah. that's really nice. Let's do a version of that, but it's nowhere near as actually nice as, no. as the, the Atari joystick is, is so much nicer. And, and this is the thing, see, you know, at this, at this point in time, everybody was following Atari's lead. Atari gave birth to the, the video game market, yeah. you know. I mean, I've, I've, got, I've got plenty of choice words to say on the subject of Atari, uh, make no mistake about that. Some of the guys that revived, we've, we've said this several times. Um, that as far as uh, building systems go or their business decisions, Atari, there's no love lost there because that they didn't build very, they didn't make things very well. Their business decisions were questionable. Um, yeah. Their software library tended to kind of stagnate and stale as time went on. People who copied them tended to do things much better than yeah. they did to be quite honest. Paul Cole makes a good point there uh, Josh, what does Paul Cole say about the box design? The box design is good, the way it could have been fixed is if they made the box open all yeah. the way. Yeah, so it only hinges yeah. 45 yeah. degrees okay. and I think I snapped mine because of that very uh, issue. So had, yeah. Paul's got a good point. If they, if I'll they be honest, when I opened open, it there, no, I did, I did so feel is like... Is it stuck? Yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't be if I was going to have to pull it too far. Yeah. Evening so. Don, Mr Kikichino has joined us. It's as, as indeed, I'm Nigel, Rob, uh, oh, Jason Adam Wardfield is a guy local to me there. Um, hi guys, nice to see you on here. Thanks for joining the stream tonight, by the way. I know it's a bit different, it's a bit alien, and I know this, some of this is going to look a little bit weird if it's cut into the guy's video, but <laughs> I'm just trying to, uh, we're, you know, we're all brothers in this, you know what I mean, and we're just trying to mix up the format Unlike a little bit. Unlike the Bitmap brothers who weren't actually brothers. <laughs> no, <laughs> and they're not actually anything anymore. Well, no, they've just been sold to. Uh, anyway, we're going on a tangent. <laughs> we always go off on a tangent. Well, Me and we Josh always go off, go off on a tangent. But we digress. It can't be helped. <laughs> so, so where we were going with this anyway is the um, yeah. Although I only had forty games with standard library, we've got a two hundred and thirty-three in one multi card. That's really interesting. What the hell are they crammed into there? <laughs> well, this is the thing. And go, going through, it's got quite a nice little, very cheaply printed and stapled together instruction booklet, admittedly. But this, because of the way the multi cart works it, it doesn't have um, a menu driven system no. you know like a lot of the I don't think there's anything on the ROM in that thing no actually, that's so the thing they would have had to put some kind of FPJ in here to yeah, get that yeah. to work with it it would have been very expensive um, I'm just going to restart our camera because our camera stops after 20 minutes okay fair enough <laughs> how professional but carry on yeah so anyway yeah so yeah this is uh, like some of the earlier multi carts you would have seen and like some of the other systems I've covered uh, this one uses a dip switch based system. Um, it's quite an extensive dip switch system. You've got 14 yeah. switches. Some of them are, are quite short. I know the early Vectrex multi carts were switch based. I had one of those myself until the Vet multi came out, and then I started using that. That one's long. That one's got a proper menu on it. Yeah. Um, That'd be like learning binary all over again. It does. To yeah. It, it does kill a little bit of the convenience in that you need to have this and this handy at all times if you want to see what games you're running. But you do start to see the logic. I think the first four switches um, determine what the memory size for that game would be, either be 1K, 2K, or 4K, yeah. I think. was. I think there was 8K as well, but that was only for the more advanced one. I think some of the board game cartridges, like Quest for the Rings and Conquest of the Earth, that was a series of games called The Master Strategy, and that came with a board and an overlay and loads of counters. Oh, I think I have they, an overlay as well? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, a keyboard overlay and a big map to play on, beautiful. I'll, I'll insert a shot of it. That, that would have been suit. I wish we had yeah. something like that to show, yeah. actually. But um, yeah, so you can understand where that comes. And there, there is also uh, a more advanced version of this. <laughs> 233 <laughs> variations of Pong, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. No, it's, it's, not as, it's not as bad as some of the, the bad Neo Geo multi-carts with loads of clones on or... You know, it's not as bad as I'm, I'm trying to think of some of the other multi carts that that I'll compete. I mean, if you've ever seen any of the NES clones, you've seen the amount no, of gap times they yeah. copy the games on those. Yeah. No, it's nothing like this. This, this has been done properly. Um, as far as the actual cartridge itself goes, I mean, it's not, it, it's basically been taken with a salvage cartridge shell from an original game. Uh, this is brand new, but when you actually look at the shell itself, there's actually scratches on the back here. Uh, probably doesn't pick up too well in this light, but there are little scratches. And it's just been hollowed out on the front using a Dremel <laughs> to expose the dip switches. 
But you know what? It's got a sticker home on brew, it. Isn't it? it. It's been tied up. It's been polished up. It's going to be perfectly functional. It doesn't feel like it's going to fall apart. No, it looks good, actually. And if yeah. they, I think if they'd have gone down the 3D printed route, it might have felt a bit naff, you know what yeah. I mean? I've got a few more yeah. carts like that. Um, so, you know, it does the job. But as far as, far as the games go, uh, if you go down the list here, you can see that we've got two or three versions of each of the games. Now, what, what you tend to find with that is... Um, this needs to readily identify whether the game, in most instances, is PAL or NTSC. Because technically the hardware is the same, uh, apart from the actual video output. But from what I understand, if you select the wrong version, it won't display anything at all. So okay. I, I don't know whether that's actually some kind of security check, or whether it is just um, a kind of... Um, I don't know, a glitch in the way that the video output yeah. works. Well, Josh has been doing some investigation onto the chipsets of this thing, and there is a slight variation, so it wouldn't surprise me. Well, there we go then. Um, but as well as the kind of standard games, we've got listings here for the 1K games, the 2K games, and the 4K games, but then there's also additional ones for the G7400, I think it yeah. is. Yeah, the G7400 Plus, which is... 1983 that was released. Third generation console, higher resolution, more powerful chipset, and able to handle backgrounds and fancier sprites. So rather than just your kind of blocks on a solid background, as yeah. you're going to see with most of these, you'd have actually had layers. I yeah, yeah. As such. I've seen Terrahawks run on a 7400, and there's like a planetary backdrop instead of a black screen that you get with this. Is it the same like cartridge for both? It's the same cartridge, I'm sure. So it the, is. Da the data for the game is whether you run it on here. So it's basically a backwards compatible yeah, 7400 so, yeah. game. Yeah. So, well, there you Which go. is fascinating because I've always wanted to see what else is on that cartridge. Ah, well, <laughs> you know, now no, you'll know. Um, but yeah, so you've got lo lots of uh, variations. There are a few games on here, I think, where they've made some alterations. I think there were some bugs in some games, much like with Mindstorm on the Vectrex. Do you know about the original Mindstorm on yeah. the Vectrex? Yeah, original Mind for anyone who doesn't know, Mindstorm on the Vectrex is built into the system. Mm. It's basically an Asteroids clone and a fantastic one at that. It is good. Um, however, the one that's built into the system, it crashes at the 10th level. At the 10th level, it just resets the game. You can't well, I didn't it. know that. Did you know you, that, Josh? Did I know what? Mindstorm. <laughs> <laughs> Typical teenager, he's out of shot doing it. Mind yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. M yeah, M Mindstorm on the Vectrex, um, you can't get past the 10th level. Oh, I haven't played it. No. Uh, uh, yeah, you can't get past the 10th level. Um, you, you have to basically reset the game, you lose a score. And it came from game. the factory with that bug in it. came from the factory. Oh, wow. And that's why they released a game called Mindstorm 2, which oh. is actually the same game, but, but they fixed the glitch. Yeah. So what that, is that something FIFA would do? No internet updating for What is that something FIFA would do? Just it's it's the same pretty game. much it's, it's just the same principle, yeah. I mean, let's face it, FIFA hasn't changed for 25 years. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> I suppose if Mindstorm would have continued, we'd have been on Mindstorm 37 by now or something like that. And it would still be a better game. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get me started on FIFA. No. I've had so many discussions no, no. about the, 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 uh, the tribulations. I'll get the code. That's a yeah, FIFA, yeah. Um, but yeah, but there are, there's, there's plenty of like bug fix versions on here. There's also versions on here where you have to set the dip switches to fit with uh, certain regional ver versions. I think there's entries here for German-only consoles and French-only consoles, oh, and Brazilian-only okay. ones. There's some games here which are listed only for the Brazilian console, so that'll be interesting to see what happens if we try and get them working on here. So, yeah, so it's a 233-in-1 multi-car, but I suppose nice. you're looking at 40 original games, um, the same again in regional variations, the same again in bug-fixed versions, um, but I think they, I think where they've gone the extra mile with this newer version, which only came out this year, by the way. Uh, actually, I think there were some pre-release ones last year. But yeah, it only came out for full release this year. Um, is where they've added in the G seventy four hundred games, and uh, probably a few extra homebrew games that have appeared on there. So, how much is it, and where'd you get it from? Right, the, <laughs> this cartridge, um, I believe it was forty. Uh, I think it was. I'm to get this right now. You put me on the spot. I believe, sorry, I believe it was fifty dollars. Um, okay, so about forty-five. Yeah, like plus plus shipping. By the time it comes to the UK, and by the time it arrives here, because this comes from, I think it was Canada. This came from. It's a company called Packrat Games, 
I know some people were asking yesterday, so if you, if that's appearing in the feed now, I'll stick a link on. There, yeah, we'll stick the link and everything on afterwards. Yeah, this this came from Canada, and you do, uh, but it, it was bought in US dollars, which was strange. That's not bad. I mean, most multi cards usually you're looking 80, 90 quid, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, you look at the typical ever the newer versions of the ever drives. If you look at the Crix ever drives, like the ones for the snares and there's things yeah. like that. The latest versions of those now they've they've passed the three figure mark. They're into the hundreds now. Mm. I know they've added some extra features. I know they've added things like, but that they, they, you're messing with FPGA yeah. chips and things like that. Well, that's like the why Carnival, the Carnival Two that I bought for the MSX. That yeah, was like 129 quid. Well, that's what I mean. That's crazy. It's crazy. I can understand it, and I'm getting to the point now in my collection where I'm willing to pay, even though this isn't a system I've ever really used, and even though this isn't a system I've got much kind of uh, nostalgia for because I never experienced it first time round. I was aware of it. I did see it back in the day. Um, but I never used it. I'm getting to the point now where I've got all the other systems and I've got games for them. And I've already told Barry with these, um, I've actually brought what's left of my collection. I'm gonna give a shout out here to Ant Harper, by the way. Uh, Ant Harper, he runs uh, Retro Gear, um, the, the store which you see at various yeah, yeah, you know, events. Yeah, yeah, a few times, yeah. Uh, he's a stand-up guy. He had a load of these which he couldn't shift. And so he sent us uh, a bunch of these games, he asked who wanted them, and uh, he basically sent a bunch of these games to me and a bunch of these games to yeah, Barry. Thank you, Ant. Because uh, he knew that Barry was a big fan of it and he knew what, that I would put them to good use. Well, as it happens, I've ordered the, I managed to get the multi cart uh, arrived before I even had a chance to use the system. So, just so you know, Ant, I'm not going to be reselling these. All the games that I've got, I'm gifting to Barry. They have to gone use. to a good home. Well, in here. Yeah, that, they'll be used they'll in the shed. Be, uh, carefully looked after for all time so they will continue to be used and put to good use so they're not going to be thrown away i'm not, just because i'm not a software collector doesn't mean i don't regard collecting highly i do regard collecting highly and i do regard you know i do understand people's want and need to collect the rare things and play the original <laughs> cartridge and things like that i just don't personally have the room for it and with me doing events all of my systems they're designed and they're collected to be played. So I, I, I don't think we've got go any room left, have we, in here? I don't think we can no. get much more in here anyway. So. Well, this is why Flash Solutions <laughs> would, would probably eventually be what you want. But with this being a system, this was your very first console. This was bought for me in Christmas 1979. It was was it this exact 70... one? Or you I don't think this was the exact one, no. I, I, do you know what? I think I gave the exact one to a friend of mine called... Um, David Broad, I think he might still have it. It's lost somewhere in Kings Norton. So this this is not the one I was bought, but it's you know it's probably in better condition than the one that I had. Um, yeah, I saw it originally in Rackham's in Birmingham, Corporation Street. They <laughs> had a big, big wooden cabinet TV. Do you remember those? I do. Yeah. And I just walked past and saw it, and because I had my heart set on um, an Atari Twenty Six Hundred, like most kids, I saw this, and for some reason I thought, and this is what sold this: the keyboard. Yeah. I took one look at that and I thought, wow, it's a computer, it's not just a console. I suppose it's and because... that was a major selling point of this machine, the fact that it had this, this, this really well, attractive... When well, you think about the, the Y2K aesthetic as it stood then, the future yeah. in 1980 looked yeah. different to the way the future looks now. Yeah. So I suppose back then it looked futuristic, well, it was looks, all silver yeah. and If you compare sleek. that to an Atari 2600, yeah. which even by 1979 was looking dated... Yes. You know, yeah, the wooden the wood strips grains, and the six yeah. buttons. I looked at that I thought, that looks so much more future. It looked like something from Space 1999, didn't it? And rather than being and solid, it's, it's yeah. more moulded, it's got I thought, wow, curves to it. I want that. And that I looks like that. a touchpad, which is yeah. futuristic at the time. You know, you didn't have touch screens, you didn't have touch pads. No. And I was bought it Christmas 1979, and it was one of the... If you look back at our video, we did a video on this oh, about two years ago, didn't we, Josh? Yeah, we did. And this was a present that I went... I was a swine for going rummaging for presents when I was a kid. <laughs> and I found, I found a big bundle of towels in the airing cupboard. I thought, we haven't got that many towels, so what's under there? So I hit it. Heard a crunch. I thought, ooh. <laughs> Moved the towels out of the way, and I found this lovely gift wrap box. And I put my finger in it and tore it. And also was the word Phillips. I thought... So I found, you were made I found up that, for ages yeah, before. Yeah. I found that in the earring cupboard two weeks before Christmas Day. And oh my god, I was like so giddy for about two weeks. Like, You're a bad child. I, I bad, never yeah. generally did that. Oh, I never did that. I was a swine for doing that. No, I, I think I did it the one year, and it was the year I had my NES as it happened. So yeah, the excitement was about the same because the NES was my first oh, console. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've been on computers for years then. The, the console. Your head, then. Look at that. <laughs> Beautiful thing, <laughs> and that, that was strange, really, because I mean, I didn't really realise till many years later, but the NES actually wasn't that popular in the UK. 
no, at the time. No, it wasn't. But like you know, everyone was buying the Master System, or and yeah. everybody. I mean, the Mega Drive Reds had come out at the time the NES came yeah. out over here, or sorry, the NES started to get popular. And I had it the year that Mar the Turtles pack was out. I had the Turtles pack because ah, I was cool. big into Turtles yeah, at the time. Yeah. But obviously for years, everything before that had been my brother's. The Spectrum 48 was my brother's, which we have still got and I do still use. Um, the Grandstand console was technically my brother's. The uh, tabletop Grandstand games, they were all my brother's. You know, So the, the, the first thing that was mine was the NES. So I understand why you went looking for this the same way I went looking for that. What's, what's Rob Utley just said? Years later, my dad's justification for buying the main Prezi on Xmas Eve was so we wouldn't have found it in the house the week before. <laughs> tearing, it, tearing apart all the... I can imagine, for, for lack of... Uh, if you're going to use your imagination, I don't really think I'd want to tear apart my dad's secret hiding places <laughs> for fear of what I might find. Moving on. <laughs> so, yeah, you can... What? <laughs> but don't don't play innocent with me. Um, but yeah, that's that's very much why I, I think I didn't want to go mooching round. But uh, yeah, so I suppose we've well, we've talked about it enough. I mean, this this obviously holds a pretty special place for you. Oh yeah. How yeah. long did you use it? We only had one telly back then. Ah. So we had this infernal television argument all the time. And when I had this, we only had a black and white telly. Yeah. And I remember on the morning, we brought, we unboxed it, plugged it in. We couldn't tune it in. We could not get it tuned ah. in, and I got quite upset. But luckily, we had a TV engineer that lived next door called Brian Rother Prothero, I think. Don't know what happened to Brian. If you're out there, Brian, hello. And um, we knocked on his door. He came round. Long. Mess with the contrast setting for some reason. I don't know why, but he did something to the contrast and tuned it in in about five minutes. Oh, and man. there it was in all its black and white glory. <laughs> and uh, I was allowed to play on it, I think, up until about Noel's Christmas presents time that Mum wanted oh, to right, watch. So okay. then it had to go off. So I was allowed on it every now and then. But I did hog well, it had the a telly. good run. I mean, I hogged the telly no end. <laughs> how, long, how long did you play before you moved on to something new? I had that probably... I'd say up until 1984. So I probably had it for three or four years. And what came uh, next? Toshiba MSX. HX2. So you went to an MSX. Now, yeah. an MSX isn't something many no. people Never. would have touched on over here. No. I certainly didn't know, even know about the MSX. Well, I was a bit was late there. to the home computer scene because everyone was on Spectrums, everyone was playing Commodore 64s. Yeah. And I'll be honest, we weren't particularly well off and there's no way Mum and could afford a 64. Spectrum, yeah. yeah. And uh, I think we went to Lasky's. Incorporation Street in Birmingham, yeah. And I had my heart set on a Commodore Plus Four. Oh. Thank oh, God, no, I didn't buy no. that. And we met this lovely sales guy who said, No, you don't want one of those. Do you want to play games? And I'm like, Yeah, he said, No, you don't want one of those. You want one of these. One of these. And he showed us yeah. an MSX. He says, From Japan, one of the best game machines you'll spend your money on. Very underrated. And I only discovered them, I think, once I started to get back into retro in recent yeah. years. And I, I don't, I currently don't own one myself. I'm looking to find what the best model is because it's such a variation. Ooh, live shed. Evening, Dean. <laughs> Good to see you. Live see, shed. People will be surprised to see something a bit fresh from here. Put your head in front of the camera and say hello to Dean. I know, yeah. Hello, Dean. <laughs> <laughs> the boy is with us. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, the thing is you, you've got a lot of nostalgia for this. And, like I yeah. say, this was your first... Um, exposure to a, a cartridge-based yeah. system, I would imagine. There was Astro Wars, then there was this, then there was MSX. Which, of course, had cartridges yeah. and yeah. possible to tape loading. Yeah, yeah. it was a bit, of a bit of a hybrid. Maybe that's why it wasn't so popular. My maybe. first console love, and you never forget your first love, do That's you? true. So, yeah. That's true. So, <laughs> so what kind of games, then, did you play on this? Give me some, give um, some titles. On Christmas morning, I only had one, and I was still chuffed to bits with it, and that was Video Pack 22. That was Space Monster. Right. So that was uh, Philip's take on Space Invaders. Oh, okay. So you I, have you, the, say, you said white... Space Monster. I don't know why. Well, I pictured a Pac-Man clone. No, no. It was, it was I know there is a Pac-Man clone. It was Space Invaders. You were a right. white pyramid at the bottom of the screen. Okay. And it was just a, a blatant rip-off of Space Invaders. Is it a good version? It's not bad. It's not bad at all. You know what? I will find that. And I will, while, while yeah. you're looking at some of the things on here, I'm going to program that one into here and we can take yeah. a look at that. What game have you got in here at the moment? That is... Terrorhawks. That is Hawks. So we're going a bit more, a bit later on it with this one. Yeah, that's a, that's a later game that is. Yeah. So you want to fire that up then, and then yeah, just yeah, yeah, kind of go over a bit about. Can you see the screen from there? You, you can. You can see a lot more than you think you can. Um, in fact, if we switch places for a minute and you play it from yeah, this position, okay. I'll just kind of dodge out the way. Let's give it a bit and of volume. 
I've got to say, it's a pretty good picture considering we're running through RF on this. Yeah, I had to fix it before we went on live. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this is... It's got absolutely nothing to do with Terror Hawks, if I'm honest. But you're that base at the bottom and you're shooting squadrons of flying saucers and each round gets faster and faster and their weapons get... I'll get rid of that one. And it's very good. I remember thinking this is really good. Is it analog control or is it digital? Digital. It is digital. Yeah. Because there seems to be like a speed of slow yeah, there, like yeah, a shoot down. Inertia. There's a bit of inertia on your, on your ship. You're not very good. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> Says the boy. But notice one thing about this. One thing it had over the Atari 2600, no screen flicker. Yes. The visuals are very stable, and there's no screen flicker. Well, I was about to say because even though the, the, you know it's that kind of double wide pixel Atari 2600 style of graphics, the movements on the enemy ships there and the colour size. It's quite it's fluid, a, isn't it? Yeah, it's very 2600, but you don't have that flicker or that. Yeah. I don't know. There's, there's always, even though like they were pretty basic, there was a very much of choppiness to 2600 yeah. games. I found. Give or take, okay, Defendo was, was super slick, but it still had that flicker. Um, and you know, I think there's a, a more appealing palette on this. Uh, how many colours, Josh? 16 or 16? Yeah. 16 uh, colour palette with sprites able to use 8 colours only. Well, see, it's not, it's not necessarily the number of colours that's the issue, no. but the choice of palette. I mean, you compare the kind of neon rainbow of a spectrum to the yeah. the kind of pastel colours of a Commodore 64. You know, even though I know yeah the Commodore 64 had more to choose from. Um, I'd say that's a bit more pleasing to the eye. I mean the Atari 2600 was a neon overload in my brain. I think some of the colour choices they made for games was astonishing. It hurts my eyes. Now that I could probably sit and play for a good while, you know what I mean? Incidentally this game was called it wasn't Terraforks in the States, it was called Attack of the Time Lord. So what they did, they just took the game, licensed Terror Hawks. Wasn't Terror Hawks popular in America then? I don't think it was. It was a British show, wasn't it? Terror Hawks is a British show. So what they did, they they um, they got a game called Attack of the Time Lord, and they just renamed they relabeled it and called it Terror Hawks. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> there you go. You learn something new every day, there folks. So this in the states is called Attack of the Time Lord. So don't say we don't teach you anything. <laughs> yeah. Right, so I'm trying to program in this uh, space monster we were just discussing. Um, now there's two, so there's two versions of space monster on here. We've got a version, uh, original video pack release, and then modified with a black background. Okay. So the one I've got, it's got a black background. It's got the black oh, no, background. No, 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 it's not. It's got it a black background. There you go. So what we'll do then is, for the sake of clarity on the TV, the black background will probably yeah. appear better. We'll put the black background version on here. So let me reset that. Um, give me a minute because I've got a lot of switches to set here. <laughs> uh, one, one, one. I'm just going to check our camera feed. Some switches. switches. Look at all these switches. Jeez. 14 switches to deal with. And then I've got to get the right, the first four right as well. So, yeah, this is going to look strange, people, but obviously these guys are doing things for the, the sake of. We're filming at the same time. <laughs> I don't know what of our stream they're going to use for their video, if anything at all, but. I'm trying to put some things on so it looks a bit more natural and fluid and they may choose to use some... What has Ant Harper said there? Ooh, multi-carp. Ooh, yeah. And <laughs> Hi Rob, cheers by the way lads, I love the Odyssey. Oh, no, no problem at all, I wonder James. when mine will come. Uh, Ant, we did give you a shout out. I don't know if you've just joined, mate. Yeah, he did just join, We yeah. did give you a, a wicked shout out just so. Play this video back afterwards. Uh, we gave you a mention. I'll quickly mention it again. Thank you for the games that you donated to us. Um, and um, I've given what you donated to me over to Barry now. So <laughs> thank you, Ant. Most um, appreciated. Right, two K. The category switches to on, 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 on. So for two K games, we're on, 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 on on the first bank. Now, while, while Crane's looking for that, one of the most controversial games for this console was ah, uh, what's it called? KC Munchkin, right? Which was a Pac-Man clone. Um, and of course everyone was ripping everybody else off in those days so Pac-Man for this was called KC Munchkin and it was developed in-house and of course when Atari saw it they wanted to put a stop to it straight away so they took Philips to court and actually got the game removed from the shelves but not before millions have been sold that's why everybody's got a copy I think I've got a copy somewhere but uh, everyone bought KC Munchkin well that's and curious it's better, it's better than the Atari 
Pac-Man. Well, that wouldn't be It couldn't have been very... It, yeah, it, it couldn't have been worse, yeah, could it? Here it is. Is it as good we'll as this Pac-Man on the Atari 2600? I'm not sure, but that's that's Munchkin on the on the G7000. We should definitely give that one a spin in a minute. Yeah. Um, it's curious you should say that, because I'm going down this list here, and we're talking about what kind of homebrew is on here. Um, there's actually one here, which is an entry, and it says Pac-Man Picture. <laughs> and under the description it says it's a what if concept. So whether this has been done oh, okay. in recent years or whether this is something that was done back in the day and being discovered, I don't know. But if they were attempting to do a full Pac Man clone and couldn't get the license, yeah. maybe that's evidence of it, I don't know. So but anyway, I'll set up the dip switches for this for um Space Monster, which is the Space Invaders clone Absolutely. you were just t- t- telling us about. Yep. Um if you want to pop that in. Yeah. Um, this is the modified version, according to this, that's got a black background, so it should actually show up a little bit better on camera. Oh, look at that. There we go. That does remind me a lot of 2600 yeah. Space Invaders, to be fair. I so you can't really. destroy the bottom row because they're shields. Can they be eroded by your... No, no? no they can't. They pop out. So you've got those robots at the top, in front of little gun turrets. Faster than I remember. Damn. <laughs> oh, so you become a little dude yeah. when your ship gets so when, blown up. So when you up. get blown up, you become a little dude, and those <laughs> bases contain your spare ships. So in, oh, in Space see. Invaders, they're just pretty much your um, barriers, aren't they? So, barrier so graphically, it's actually given a little bit more than you would yeah. have got from the original, and obviously you've got four colour on this. You're not very good at this, are you? <laughs> You know, that's the second time I've heard that now. Now, seeing as though, seeing as though we've got the benefit of multi-generational input, I think it's only right that Josh should fair, step on in a minute and have to demonstrate. Yeah, 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 that's right. No, no, I think it's got to be done. I think it's got to be done. I'll be honest, I don't think I can do any better than Barry. Uh, but I've seen this kid just play R-Type. So if you can handle R-Type on the arcade, I think he can handle Space Monster. Joshua, if you don't I, can please. Handle, I can handle Ghosts and Ghouls. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see who he gets on. Oh, this control is weird. See, that's the thing, you've got to get used to controls first. But a good workman yeah. never blames his tools. tools. I don't like this controller. Can you destroy the green ones at the bottom? No, they contain your spare ships. So when you get shot... Yeah, he's about those green circles. Now the green circles. Oh, no, 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 you can't destroy those. So that's like their shield. Yeah. Oh, okay, I do. Bottom row you cannot destroy. You're not very good at this, are you, Josh? Hey, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so press your fire button when you go under a square. There you go. Oh, dear. Oh, oh so that's how you pick... Oh, yeah. I'm... Oh, you tell me when I die. Nice. It's actually got a bit more of a, a layer to it yeah. than, than space. Yeah. So it's not just and a And if you get up. shot as the dude, you are completely dead. Whoa. Oh, he's come down to have a go at you. Yeah. The weird one-eyed octopus thing. Look at the animation on his legs. It's not bad. It's, it? it's not bad at all. It, it, it is a strange kind of spot this occupies in my mind because it's like it's not pure. Wait, go away. It's not as tacky as a. I'm gonna say it's not as tacky as a 2600 game. Why is this I find a lot of 2600 games tacky. You know, very quickly done. Hey. Oh, He's getting the game the hang of it now. Oh, oh shit! And I shoot. What do you do if you're stuck like that then? Oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not very good at this. Well, you've had a practice run now, so you should be better this time round, in theory. So while Josh is playing that, I found a sheet of paper here with Josh's notes on. And for those that are of a geek, I'll give you a little background, yes. shall I say. So the console has an Intel 8048 8-bit CPU running at 1.79 megahertz. Oh, he does my notes. 64 bytes. I know I've got them. Sorry, mate. 64 bytes of internal RAM. 64 bytes, not kilobytes, bytes. just bytes. Yeah, and a whopping 128 bytes of external RAM. Oh, I'm trash. I'm actually dreadful. It has an Intel 8244 custom video chip. Now, depending on whether it's NTSC or PAL, it's got an 8244 or an 8245. Maximum resolution is 160 by 200 pixels. 160 by 200. That is shocking. That is shocking. 16 color palette. I'm so bad. Video and audio output is via RF modulator, but in France, now I didn't know this, in France they had a SCART connector on theirs. SCART? Lucky swines. Yeah. 
No, and, and now France had a, France had some kind of weird standard for their uh, UHF, didn't they? The SCART well? is sometimes called the Euro Connector, isn't it? The SCART that Euro was what, Connector. That's how I knew back in the day, yeah. yeah. So the France version of this console has got a SCART <laughs> connector. Well, I'm seriously doubting it would have been an RGB mm -hmm. out. It would have been a kind of weird combined composite yeah. RGB. And here's an interesting fact that you'll notice that a lot of the games look similar and the same sprites are used time and time and time again. That's because one man literally wrote oh, all no the way. games in-house. A chap yeah. called Ed Averett wrote nearly all the games single-handed. Well, it makes sense to recycle your assets, yeah. doesn't it? You know. yeah. Yeah. Oh, I've done it so hard. Though. I'm guessing a lot of the games would feel very similar. So are there any games then, Barry, that you haven't experience in a long time you want to see back Ooh, on here that you can recall let me think. Um, or any killer oh, apps for oh. the for the system oh, be, you know. there was a <laughs> cracking game that was a bit like defender called freedom fighters is that freedom on there? fighter that seems on the list yeah all right kid get out of here now you've, you've yeah, yeah well, it's not no, i'm getting sick at all it's not on the 2k list so it must be slightly more advanced freedom fighters yes yeah Oops. right we'll get that a crack next then so apparently it's uh yeah, thanks Josh, that's oh, great. Do you want to, uh, yeah, go on, off you go, that's enough now. <laughs> that's how it is. <laughs> Sit in the corner with your notes. That's how it is. So let's let's see how he gets on with Freedom Fighters. Right. That's <laughs> I think we need to actually cool. power this off and, and to change um, the dips on yeah, Just take the adapter out of the wall there. So I think that might be a modification um, I might make to mine is to add a physical power switch. Yeah. Because that can be, that's something I've never been that comfortable with. Uh, just want to say hi to Kevin. He did join the stream a little while back. We didn't see it. Erin's birthday oh, yeah. in two that days. Oh, yeah, that was it. Yeah, yeah. So happy birthday happy to Erin. Happy birthday Erin. to Erin in two days' time. And it's Freedom Fighters we're loading up now. This is a 4K title. So Paul Cole said the game reminds him of Demon Attack. Yeah, it does actually. It is. I like Demon Attack. It's a great game. So yeah, it does a bit. Yeah. So, oh, one, one, one. I promise you, d d d quick and dirty, mate. This is how we how I do my streams. <laughs> this is how we do it. Here's some music. Josh, yeah. sing something. <laughs> what? Oh, you don't want to hear my music. It's fine. You know what? You're probably right. <laughs> Taylor Swift, or you were into? What? <laughs> hey, don't diss the Swift. Oi, 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 oi. She, she, nah, she's... Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> don't nah, swear. Nah, nah, nah. She's nah. trash, she's trash, she's trash. I don't know. Right, on, off, on. This is a 4K game, so we'll test if this is. This the good thing is I haven't even tested this cartridge yet. So you get in when I first usually when I do my videos, I've usually sat down with it, gone through some of the games, worked out how to work it, and so just so I don't get embarrassed when I turn it on and it's like it's broken or something. <laughs> so we're gonna so we're gonna see now just if uh, if this is fully working. If it now does a 4K game, okay. So let's pop this back in. Yeah. Indeed we are. Oh, this is it, this is it. So this is a game called Freedom Fighters, which was Philip's take on Defender. Yeah, so you can You do get a nice little animation of the ship turning, which yeah. I wouldn't have expected in this kind of resolution. I thought it would just jump between left and right, you know, sprite. And it's quite fast, it's a bit frantic. And what you're looking to pick up, if I remember right, you're like little like there's one. So you pick up that little oh he's gone. He's gone. So you pick up the little dudes in the uh, squares. It is quick. Thankfully not as fast as Defender because Defender <laughs> kills me. I can't play Defender. It's, it's, I can't do it. Too many buttons isn't there. I think we, we discussed this at Arcade Club and we said it's one of those games that you want to like but it's you either I think you either love it or hate it and yeah. it's, I can't get on with the controls. I can't get on with the controls. I can't stand the fact that there's a button to reverse the ship when all I want to do is just push the joystick in the Especially, especially when your instinct is to reach for all your buttons in one place. The buttons are like here, there and everywhere on a defender control panel. So. That's not a bad animation actually, the little... It's, it's quite, it's quite yeah. cool, isn't it? The explosion in those are basically white squares. I suppose the only real difference between this and Defender is with Defender you've got the uh, the play field, yeah. the mini play field at the top. You've got the little radar thing. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I mean obviously you can understand the resolution wouldn't even support that on this. Well, you know, you've got a decent use of colour, you know, your, your score's nice and clear. And once you so know what you're that doing, fast, yeah, it's very that's, difficult to... Well, that's um, the thing, not being able to see the play field, you can't no, see where the big clusters are. I believe, are. if you change the controller, you can fly around the screen and the screen doesn't scroll. So it's a different game depending on what controller you pick up. 
And is that supposed to be a feature object? Yeah. Because you should yeah. have blue, not yeah. green. So now I've only got one screen in the field of play. So rather than toggle switches, you've got yeah, the same different controller. It's basically like a two-dimensional mind storm when it's like this. There's a two-dimensional asteroids in a way. You can only scroll left and right, right? It doesn't wrap yeah. top and bottom, right? Like. Right, I'm going in a bit. All right, say goodbye, Josh. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> the boy is leaving us. Thanks for joining us. You're See you welcome. later, Josh. Goodbye. <laughs> Back to Fortnite. Jesus, Cole. <laughs> <laughs> Dean Hedges says it sounds like Peaky Blinders. <laughs> oh, I don't know. These Southerners. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, well, the difference is here, you, you're actually hearing real accents here. Not that fake one you see on TV. I, I can't put my fake one on if you want. <laughs> no, you only use that one when Aaron's around. Yes. Eat a right. So, yeah, that's Freedom Fighters. and No problem, Kev. No problem, Mr. Okay. Thanks for the shout out. So an another cool little game. Yeah. So, I mean, from what I've seen so far, it's it's definitely would have been on par with the twenty six hundred. You know, there's enough. There's yeah. nothing. I suppose the only big noticeable difference I can see physically is, would this be bigger? Have you got a twenty six hundred for comparison oh, behind you? Or is that twenty six hundred up there? That is an intelligent. So we can compare it to oh yeah, so I saw the wood grain. There's an intelligent. Yeah, it's, you are you are in yeah. So, I mean, size, it's, it's not too far removed. I suppose the 2600 was a little bit flatter, but it still had this kind of raised profile where the uh, the cartridge goes. Yeah, in. so he, everyone knows how big an, an Amiga 600 is. Yeah. So it's the same width of a, as it's an Amiga 600. Not far off. Not as deep. So the Amiga 600 is actually slightly smaller. Than the, the, the yeah. G7000, yeah. So, so it's, it's not, a, not a bad comparison. And there's a Wii U pad. <laughs> there you go. That was a touchpad started to really be a touchpad, not not a horrible, weird, dead flesh membrane like the uh, the ZX eighty yeah. one. But no, I mean, I can I can see at the time. See, I I probably would like you. I would have saw this and I would I would have thought to myself, well, that seems more like what I would want to own than yeah. twenty six hundred. Yeah. You know, I knew people who had the twenty six hundred in the eighties. Yeah. But they probably didn't get them until a couple of years later. Yeah. Things were starting to look a little better then. And there was a friend of mine. Actually, from this angle with the light, I can see the square where the power button goes. I'll, I'll do a close up on that so you can have a look. There's a square just there. So the case moulding still has a hole so in it. And what they've done, knowing. they've put this sticker straight over the top. So I can actually see the square where the power button goes if that was a US model. See, so I, I don't know if I'm such a big. Because I know a lot of people, a lot of people like on our team for Revival, they, they modify their systems. They. They will do the 50, 60 hertz mods and the region mods. Yeah. I don't know if I've ever been such a big fan of it, but when I, when I found with some of these older systems, they lack some of the basic, what I would sort of say, are necessities. Yeah. Like a physical power switch, yeah. it baffles my brain yeah. that they don't have one. Because Why would you want to wrestle a big power brick in well, that's right. the socket every time you want to change a car? a massive you know? power brick. And like, I think I had this discussion again around the Spectrum Next when they were talking about the development of the Next, and they said, well... You terminate the power by pulling out the wall, and I said, "That's fine if you're in one of the lower voltage countries." Yeah, you know what I mean. But have you ever dealt with two forty volt power supplies in the UK? The UK network. The amount of PCs I've blown over the years by just pulling a cable is ridiculous, and the amount of equipment that's been, I've seen damaged at events for the same reason. And I've said, "Why would you not put a nice insulated?" Plastic power switch on, which costs a few pence, you yeah. know what I mean? If people are wondering why I'm grinning like a buffoon, it's because I'm just reading these comments here. Where's Cillian Murphy? Has he turned up with his C64? Oh, there's always <laughs> one. <laughs> What's this, the revival shed? Yeah, it is, Dave, yeah. yeah. The revival shed. I'm just going to open the door because it's absolutely roasting <laughs> here. <laughs> well, we're just uh, mixing it up a bit. Yeah, a couple of dogs will run in and the wife will run in a minute and go... Yeah. Right. Well, as far as coverage of you know the system goes, I've probably covered all I want to cover for the sake of my stream. But we're not going to leave you yet. I don't know what, if there's anything now you want to do. No, do you know what? I think we've, we've pretty much covered it. It's, it's a it's a console that I'm really really fond of. Um, and like I say, a friend of mine did have the Atari Twenty Six Hundred, and when he came around and saw this, he asked if he could swap. He wanted to swap his Atari 2600 for that. 
and both sets of parents, strangely enough, said no. Um, but yeah, it's it's just a, I've got very very fond memories. If it was it was a time well, we're talking seventy nine, nineteen eighty. Yeah. It was it was the dawn, I think, of the best era for gaming for me. I think eighty one to literally the end of the Amiga era for me. Well, you you've, you've it's like got the golden age of gaming. Wasn't it, it? it is. I mean, the, whichever way you cut it. I mean, the, the innovation came in the seventies. It became more commercial in the early 80s yeah. and at that point the microchip explosion was yeah. was really happening you know they were they were saying that I mean that they talk about now that they say that microchip capabilities is, is now accelerating fast states do that there's a there's a term for it which is something about the speed where we can possibly do is doubling yeah. in the space of time and they reckon it's faster now than ever however in terms of applied electronics yeah. I would say the early 80s is when things were leaping the most. And this was why when people talk about the 8-bit era, the 16-bit era, yes, those tended to be very much marketing gimmicks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But when you think about it, um, in terms of what consoles did, and this, this is I mean, it's an argument for another day, but when we talk about like the, the console generations, I've said before that I don't believe that uh, we will have true new generations of consoles coming out because I don't think... The applied leaps in technology is really being shown. You know, we're at the point in PC technology now where consoles have caught up with PCs. Once they yeah. did that, where do you go? And the problem is with PCs, PCs have kind of stagnated as we need to move yeah. into quantum yeah. computing. At this time, every time there was a new discovery and we could double what was possible, that's what the companies did. And, yeah. you know, so many new consoles come out to demonstrate that. So... The first generation to second generation, you went from a, a black and white screen with a single dot to full colour yeah. graphics and yeah, sound. Yeah. You went up to the next generation with the NES, you had sprite capabilities yeah. and you know, you know, proper, you know, orchestraic sound, I would suppose. Then you went to the sixteen bit generation and we started to get custom chips, mode seven, yeah. polygon processing. And this this is purely an Intel off the shelf powered machine. It's um, yeah, you did Intel say that. CPU, Intel graphics and sound, straight off the shelf, straight in there. And incidentally the CPU in this console was the same one that Korg and Roland used in their synthesizers. Oh, so there it was we the go, it was the first one of the first series of CPUs ever made by Intel. So you know we're talking the dawn of, you're looking at the dawn there you of go. Intel the, there. <laughs> bit of history there, you know it's, the it's, dawn it's, of Intel. There was always something at that time, I suppose, that, that broke new ground. Everything at that time, no matter what system it was, broke new ground in some way, shape yeah. or form. And obviously, this one obviously was using, starting to use that technology. I, I, I still think, compared to its contemporaries, I mean, this is my first real exposure to it. And if I knew then what I knew now, if I'd have been old enough at the time, I admit, when this came out, when this first came out, I wasn't even born. I was uh, one of Thatcher's children, so I just missed out on this. Um, so what were you, were you born then? 1980. Okay. I was born in 1980, so... but So I'm really old then? But I was one... <laughs> <laughs> but see, I was the youngest of the kids in my family. I was the last of four. Mm. So all of my exposure to culture came from my older brothers and sisters. Yeah. So yeah. with my brother being 10 years older than me, at that time, he was mm. fully into it, and that he was probably, you know... You were part of the first generation to yeah. grow up with computers. I was the first one to grow up in it. Uh, you saw things before it and as it started to arrive, and this mm. would have been your exposure. You know, so we, we had Pong consoles, then we moved into, you know, my brother's big one was a Spectrum, and he, and yeah. he got one, and that was my first. That was our first serious computer in the looking, household. Looking, I've got dozens of them. Got you have? Could, is that a QL? That's a QL, look at that. When did you acquire that? Uh, a while ago, mate. <laughs> it's so cool to see it's some of the things in here. I mean, there's some things in here, guys. I mean, Barry's t taking you on tour. But if you want to see a lot more of the shed, by the way, go over to the Retro Shed YouTube channel because I'm sure he's done several tours. There's the 2600. I've just spotted oh, yeah, it in the background yeah, right. yeah, yeah. While, while I was waving my finger around. Yeah. Um, but every, there's one of every single kind of console here. We, we alluded to the big track earlier and the uh, the touchpad, um, the touch there keypad. There it is. That's what I was referring to. Yeah. And um, I believe what that. What a thing of beauty. It, it, it is such a cool thing. thing. I, see, I remember uh, at our school, at our primary school, when Big Track first came out, they, they had a Big Track, and one of the little classes you did was to basically shut off because it had like a little tow truck thing with it. Yeah, that's it? right, the transporter. You, yeah, yeah. you had to program in its route to go and dump this, <laughs> this tow truck thing. 
it was such a such a cool concept. Um, but yeah, I mean, around the time of this, I mean, it's contemporary, as you like say, it was competing against the 2600, but it was obviously going to win, it had a lot more corporate backing. Um, but yeah. Then there was the Intellivision, you say? There was, there was the Intellivision, there was Vectrex, uh, sorry, yes, there was, yeah, Vectrex, Intellivision, um, Channel F. And yet none of those were massive sellers, and yet I'd, at the time, I he I'd heard of the Channel F, oh. I'd heard of the Vectrex. Yeah. No one had on yeah, the Vectrex expensive. was released literally months before the game crash. And yes, it wasn't cheap. Well. I remember seeing um Vectrex. I think it was in Safeways of all places. The I was with mum and dad and it was it was something ridiculous. It was either a figure that sticks in my head is either 180 quid or 280 quid and in 1981 yeah, that, that was, was extortion. I think my mum and dad I, I looked at the Vectrex and said, I want one of these. And the first words out of my, my my dad's mouth was, "Hang on, we've just bought you a console." You know, in fact, if you and go at that on, price, you've got to be joking. <laughs> yeah, if, if you if you go on YouTube now, there's a Woolworths ad from Christmas 1982, and it's got the exact price mm -hmm. on there, so you'll be get to see exactly how much it was, and that was a lot of money for just a game. The Vectrex for me was always the, the holy grail. You know, it, it's one of those consoles I don't I've wanted since being I was a little kid. Lusted after by many people I knew. No. Now it's become very much a cult. Cool I took one look at that thing running, and thought. That's got a vector monitor. Being a geek, obviously, I thought yeah. that's got a vector monitor in it. That is literally asteroids in a machine uh -oh, that yeah. big. I suppose I would the hope would always be that Star Wars would come to yeah. it in a. In a it, it, I would have. I would have sold everything <laughs> I had to have a Vectrex it, in the, in the early eighties. It would have been awesome. It would have been awesome. But at the end of the day, you can own them all now. And looking around here, you do own all of them now. So you own pretty much everything. I'll say your computer collection is more expansive than mine. Do you? <laughs> have, <laughs> My mate had a trailer with his, and he's still a flushed twat. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love big track. Yeah, you have. Yeah, certainly. Yeah, yeah. He's for his tutti frutties, isn't he? <laughs> tutti frutties. His tutti frutties. Uh, he probably still does. Yeah, yeah, probably does. You know, if I had a big track, that's probably what I'd do with it. I'd send it to the kitchen and just say... Yeah, aren't you supposed to attack in? your golden retriever with it? If you have a look... Actually, look back at <laughs> some of our videos. If you look at our back catalogue of videos, I got the original big track video advert that I got from YouTube yeah. and I inserted a little bit of it going up to our retriever oh, Crockett and then I cut back so anyway I digress <laughs> that's, that's what you have to do <laughs> so yeah the, G, the G7000 very interesting system it, yep. it would be nice to try and pick up uh, the 7400 seeing as how there are some advanced games they're on rare. here for they're, you. they are rare they're like the the 7200 so the 7200 um, if you look on eBay do a search for Philips G7200. Right? Yeah. You'll find loads of them in France. I think it was only released in France. And it's one of these with a built-in 9-inch black and white. See, I didn't, I didn't even know about this. See, I'm at the point now Amazing. in my collection where I'm Gold starting dust. to... I, I love to hear Rare because I'm not one of these who wants to collect every colour of Nintendo 64 or every colour of PlayStation no. because by that point it was purely done to try and reinvigorate a little bit of interest. Yeah. Yeah. All they were doing is recycling the same thing. What I do love is special editions, one-offs, yeah. and modifications, yeah, yeah. and something like that you won't see very often. Yeah. I didn't even know it existed, it, but it now I do very, know it exists. Very rare. I would it's like to rare. get one. I think you're probably looking about three fifty, four hundred to five hundred. I can for a deal nice with one. that. I can deal with that. And yeah. there's not many. It's got. It's got. And it would have been for me perfect back in the day because there were so many arguments over the TV. Yeah. Had I had Oops. one of these with a built-in screen that'd have been absolutely perfect well see that that's part of my part of my thing see i i I've, I've got like a budget in my mind of what i like to spend on kind of rare systems and i have a budget in my mind but i don't <laughs> it'll never happen <laughs> well yeah but she's there's not no, listening the yeah. only thing <laughs> is i mean I, I don't know what yours cost you but i was just talking about mine mine isn't as great a shape as this and it is loose but it's clean it's functional it fully works mm -hmm. And I paid 20 quid for that and the ZX81. I thought about 30 quid. Well, that's what I mean. If you want to sample this, you, you probably can't even buy a decent 2600 for that now. No. And there is an emulator. It's called O2EM and it's very good. Ah, there is an Go emulator. Go and download the emulator. It. Yeah, it, it, it's freely available all over the place. There's no problems with licensing or copyright or any of that nonsense. See, I wondered um, that. I didn't know whether you'd have yeah. to use MESS. For example, because yeah, Mess is like an all runs nicely on Windows. There's a version for Mac as well, I think. Uh, it's called O2 EM, um, and you can add raster lines and you can resize oh, the really window, cool. and really it plays cool. very nicely. Really plays well. So if so, you want to sample a bit of this and you haven't yeah. got one, you don't be messing around with, you know, RF, which nobody likes messing around with <laughs> RF. Let's face it. Then you know you can do it. Uh, got a scoop, keeps mine. Yes, yeah, see you later. Yeah, Dean. take care, Dean. Nice to see you yeah. during this during the stream. 
and uh, well thanks to everyone who's joined the stream yeah. to be yeah. honest because it's it's been interesting just mixing it up a bit with you guys yeah. and you know talking because there's a lot of people like I don't do YouTube generally I watch a lot of YouTube I know you guys are on YouTube I upload things mainly for revival but I don't stream to YouTube or use YouTube yeah. and you know I wanted to kind of you know do it this way um, to don't worry I'm just resetting a camera right. I wanted to do it this way <laughs> to kind of um, introduce a few more people who maybe don't even look at YouTube at all a lot of people know you and they've seen you at events and they know what you do they may not have checked it out now you've seen a bit you know Barry's on the same level as us oldies you know we <laughs> You know, I, I live entirely on Facebook when it comes to social media. I don't bother with yeah. Instagram. Or I, we, like used, that. we used to do a bit on Twitter, but it's a complete waste of time, so we don't bother with yeah. it. So. I think with Twitter, you get lost in a sea of hashtags and oh. and, and, and stuff. And it, 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 yeah. It's all about... Do you know what the best thing Twitter's for? Beating up companies. Yes, definitely. Twi twi Twitter is fabulous for beating you up companies. You pan them on there, they will listen. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I totally get that. But yeah, I just thought it would be nice to show you guys something different. And to be honest... I thought it'd be nice to step up my game a bit because I know it's just usually me in my kitchen, you know, setting my stuff up on a table or me and Aaron slinging a few words backwards and forwards. So um, I thought it'd be nice to come in and show you that I have got more friends than one um, and uh, show you a bit of what these guys do and, uh, you know, set things up a bit, bit better for you guys to enjoy, you know. And plus, I, I'm not always full of the chat. I mean, I don't know much on the subject. I know plenty of people who do. So, but anyway, thanks for checking yep. in guys thank, and you very, uh, thank you very much for joining us and uh, uh, it's yeah. nice to welcome Craig Turner to the shed of all things the retro. shed indeed yeah. are Did there you? any links you want to shoot out to people oh, we'll tell shoot them to find it yeah but you can find us on Facebook we have a group on Facebook I think a lot of you guys are already members of our Facebook just go on to just search for the retro shed on Facebook and of course go over to YouTube search the retro shed you will find our channel and if you enjoyed this, you will probably enjoy the rest of the crazy stuff that we. Um, yeah, you got some good we ones produce. coming up. We've on got, yeah, yeah. I know you're going to cut. You're going to cut this one in, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. We're going to create a video of this. I'm going to get this content and hack it up, and uh, we're going to do a piece of camera in a minute, actually. So you won't see what we're going to do no. next. So make so, sure you check yeah, out the so YouTube. Yeah. So even though you've seen this, make yeah. sure you watch the YouTube video of this. Yeah, you'll see some bonus stuff, and I'm going to question him. Uh, <laughs> stuff <laughs> and you'll probably see some better quality footage cut into that as well of the actual games and stuff so you know definitely see that there's there's two levels of things we're doing here and it, it's it's what you know i like to see kind of done from all angles and you know barry wants to try something new so we're just trying this out anyway i, I promised yeah. for a long time i was going to come over and check out the shed and just chew the fat with you and that's yeah, yeah. what we've done today so and uh, oh, and Josh, yeah, sorry, Dave, yeah, yeah. Josh has wandered off back inside for a game of Fortnite, I think. Yeah, he's, he's got to check in with his muckers. He, he has, um, he has, a, he has like time segments in his head for retro, and they're that, that big, and his yeah. Fortnite segments are, like this big. So. And he's got to check in with all his girlfriends. Yeah, he's as got well. to check in with the ladies, and you know what he's like. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, he's a kid in demand. <laughs> well, thank you all for joining. Yeah, thank I'm, you very much. I'm not much. quite sure why there's an angry face on there. Um, I don't know if that's meant to be put on there, but I thought we've upset somebody anyway. <laughs> I'll find out who it is anyway. Somebody's angry. If, if, if it's someone I don't like, I'll go and throw some insults after this. <laughs> but uh, no, if it's, I'm sure it's an accident. Um, but yeah, anyway, thanks for joining us, guys. Yeah. And um, definitely check out the Retro Shed stuff. we got more stuff coming up on the Yam Yam Retro Gaming channel. I've got more systems I want to cover. We were discussing an obscure one just before this. I talked about the Kevin Keegan... Um, Pong system. I'll, I'll cover that one in. <laughs> I've never I'll, heard of the Kevin system. You, you will see all about it. I've got to set up my CRT and everything at home to be able to demonstrate that one properly. But when, once we do, it's going to look absolutely awesome anyway. But I've got a lot more rare systems I want to show you. I've got some new ones I'm picking up. I'm still doing a lot of stuff on the arcade front. Obviously, I've been sharing a lot of my work over the summer on my arcade machines. There's new ones coming in. In fact, there's a new one being picked up on Friday, which I'm going to be working on. And I'm going to be converting that into something. So there's going to be a lot going on on that yep. front. So definitely a lot going on. And I'm going to give a shout out now um, and just inform you all if there's anybody still attached to this. Um, I'm going to be announcing it in the next day or two. The ticket site for Revival is now actually live. Um, so Revival for the Gamers Part 1 2020 on the 7th and 8th of March has now gone live. If you go to the ticket site for Revival Retro Events, you'll see the ticket site is live. If you're a membership card holder, it's going to be free for you to attend. 
but you do need to pre-book your tickets in advance and submit your membership card numbers. It's our, our gift back to those people who've supported us for a long time. Not only that, everybody else, it will only be £2 to attend. So if you're sensible, you will get on the ticket site fast, you will order your tickets and you will get them now because it, there is a limited capacity at next year's events and it will fill up fast. So if you want to get your free tickets and you want to get in early, uh, you need to make sure you get on the site. Membership cards are still available if you want to get in early uh, and if you want to attend technically for free. Um, so make sure you get on that now. Yeah. This is the first place you're hearing about it. So if you've seen, joined this stream, get on over there now. It'll be copied over onto the Revival site soon. Um, but I'll be starting to release information, including what guests we've got coming. This fella will definitely be there. and He'll definitely be filming in some kind of capacity for his will, channel. Yeah, yeah. And um, there's going to be loads of new sections we're going to be showing off there. But I'll talk about all those in an upcoming video. But until then, I'll see you Thank later, you for guys. Joining us. Take care. See you later. Be good. <laughs>